Hello everyone and welcome to the first session of Top Tips from Galaxy Australia. These sessions are designed to help you get the most out of Galaxy, whether it's to save you time, to streamline your data analyses and generally make it easier to get your research done. Our first top tip is from Dr. Anna Syme and Anna is going to be sharing her top tips when you're uploading get data to Galaxy Australia. Uh, so I will hand straight over to Anna to show you how it's done. Great. Thanks, Pat. Great. So what I'm going to do is um, go through and show you on um, this window as I go through the different steps. All right. So I'm going to talk about a few different ways that we can upload data to Galaxy Australia. So I've got Galaxy open here. Um, you can follow along um, with the steps as I go, or you can just watch and um, hopefully learn some top tips. So I've got Galaxy Australia open, which is usegalaxy.org.au. So the first thing I'm going to do is name my history. So you can name your history, whatever you want. I'm going to call it top tips. And then what I'm going to do is get some data into this history here in the right-hand panel. So to do that, I'm going to upload data, this button in the top left-hand corner. And I'm going to bring in a file that is on my, what's called a local file, my local computer. So my own computer here. So choose local file. And I'm going to bring in this file here called reads fast queue. So start and then close. So that's bringing in the file here into the history panel. It's loading as the top file. It's orange while the job is still running, and then it's going to turn green once the file is loaded. So this is some DNA sequencing reads. We can have a look at this file by clicking on the eye icon here. And it shows us the contents of this file in the center. It's got each read header then the DNA for each read. And then this line of twos is the quality scores, although in this case, this is just a synthetic file. So normally we would expect a lot of symbols in this line to represent the quality scores. So this is our first file we have into our history. So another way we might wanna get a file in is if we have a URL. So we can also do this via the upload button. Click on upload, click paste fetch data, and then I've got the address of a file that I'm going to copy and paste in and then click start and again close. So this is another file of sequencing reads that's loading into our history, orange while it's um, loading and then green once it's finished. So while we're waiting for that one to load, we will might, might go to the next step and we'll come, oh no, it's finished, we'll have a look. Click again on the eye icon. Again, this is a fast queue file. So we've got read headers, then the DNA for each read, and then the quality scores, which usually look like this, a whole lot of symbols. So we've got two different files in, one from our computer and one from a URL. Um, another way we can get data in is from a database that Galaxy has access to. So there are some different databases that are linked to Galaxy. So again, we can do this with the upload button. We're going to go to choose remote files. Um, in this case, we're going to look at the files in GenomeArc, which is data from the Vertebrate Genomes Project. So genome sequences for a lot of different vertebrate species. So normally, if you were looking for data here, you'd probably go into species and you would search for a particular species name. In this case, just for the example, I'm just bringing in a test file here, which is a yeast genome. And again, we click start and then close. And this is loading here into the galaxy history. So that might take a little while, depending how large it is, although that one's not super large. So just to summarize on what we did there, we got data in three different ways with this upload button. We chose a local file with this button here. We pasted in a URL from this paste fetch button here, and we chose a remote file on a database somewhere else. So we got all of those files in. This is our latest file. 
which is a yeast genome. We can click on that. This is a faster file, so it has the header and then the um, sequence. So that's three different ways. Another way we can get data is from this data button here, which is some public data, which is also available in Galaxy. We can go to data, data libraries. And for example, we might be interested in gene annotations. So here we have a folder of gene annotations. This one is Arabidopsis, which is a type of plant. And we might be interested in this file here, which is the annotation um, of the genes in that genome. So we tick that file, we click add to history, just as data sets, this is a single file. Select the history, set current history, import. And that has loaded very quickly into the top of the history. So we can look at this as well. It's a GTF file, which is a type of annotation file. And we can click on the eye icon and see that file here in the center panel. So there's one other way I want to show you. Um, often we want to get data into Galaxy that is on a database somewhere else, such as GenBank or NCBI. And there's tools to do this in Galaxy. But first we need to find the identifier for that file. So to do that, we can go to NCBI. We can search for SRA, which is the sequence read archives. And then here you'd enter what you're looking for. Which, if I spelled that properly, this is a type of bacteria. Um, we're just going to search for sequencing reads. In this case, we're going to search for DNA. So I've ticked that Oxford nanopore fast Q just to narrow down our search. Um, in real life, you'd be doing a lot more investigation, but just say you already had done that and you knew that this was the sequence you wanted, you find the SRR number copy that, and this is what we have to tell Galaxy to look for. So going back to Galaxy, there's a tool called FasterQ Dump, and that needs this SRR number. So we paste that in there and tell that to run, and that will bring that file into Galaxy directly without having to go to download it to our computer first. So that's really the summary for how you can get data into Galaxy, um, showing these different ways you can do it and quite a few of the ways you can bypass having to bring it to your computer first. You can actually bring it directly into Galaxy from some of these other ways. So I hope that's been useful to you. And the next top, top tips is going to be talking more about organising your data once it's already here in your Galaxy history. Awesome. Thank you, Anna, for those tips for uploading data into Galaxy. It's great to see just how many ways you can actually get your data into Galaxy. Um, so we are welcoming questions through the chat function. So if you've got a question, please throw it in. Um, in the meantime, we do have a couple of pre-submitted questions for Anna. Um, so Anna, when you're uploading files, can you name them something more useful than other data, for example? Yes, you can. And that's actually a great point. Um, that's something you probably want to do routinely um, just to keep track of where you got your data from. So you can see in this case, if we're bringing in data and we're getting it from lots of different places, it can be quite easy to lose track of where it's from. So that is probably the first thing to do when you do bring data in. For example, I can show you here on this reads file that I brought in, click on the pencil icon and we can edit the name. And that I really recommend putting in as much information that you need to be able to find where you got that file from. Um, so for example, the reference number or whatever you need to make it understandable to you. Great, thank you. Um, so a question from the floor. Uh, when you're uploading data from NCBI directly into Galaxy Australia, that, that's great, but these data files are really big and we can see yours is still loading. So do we have to leave Galaxy open and wait for it to upload or can we go away and do something else? So for if you're running a tool like this, like we ran, 
Um, you don't need to leave Galaxy open while that's running. You can shut it down or shut your computer down. Next time you come back, um, if it's finished, it will all be green. Um, there is one thing I'm not sure about, which maybe some of the other, if there's someone else here who knows about Galaxy, um, which I was puzzling over when I was uploading a large file last night, actually. Um, it was a local file and I was uploading it. And um, I didn't know in that case whether I could actually close the, the upload window or not, or whether I needed to leave that open. I can probably open this. So if you upload a file from your computer and switch off the computer, the connect connection will be lost. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I seem to be happening. So thanks, Igor. So yeah, so if you're uploading locally, you would need to leave this open. Um, but if you're using a tool, you can close Galaxy and it will keep going. Great. Um, so when you showed us the data libraries section, there was some some good collections there. Do you know if the, the team is adding to that over time? Yeah, that is something we have been thinking about. Um, again, we can see, yeah, there's some good data libraries in here, but um, it's something we're thinking about so that we can add useful data sets, particularly for um, people when they want to test tools. So sometimes it's really useful to have an easily accessible um, set of really small files so that you can easily test a tool and the parameters in the tool. So yeah, watch this space. That's something we want to work on. Brilliant. Um, and then the last question I've got for you at the moment is, if I've got lots of files, um, can I upload them through the, like from my local computer, for example, can I upload them all at once or do I have to do them one at a time like you showed us? Um, as far as I know, here when you're uploading a local file, um, you can click on them as a group. So in that sense, if I had more than one file here, um, you can upload them as a group together. But having said that, um, I do recommend people have a look at the Galaxy Training Network material. I've actually got some open here. Um, if you are doing more complex things with your data uploads, particularly if you want to group files into collections, um, even find ways to automatically name things based on the file names and so on, there's a lot of functionality in Galaxy for that. So um, if you click around through the Galaxy Training Network, I've got a few different ones open, but probably the best way to do it is to go to the Galaxy Training Network and then there is a section called using Galaxy and managing your data. And that really covers a lot of that detail about the steps you need to take to um, most efficiently group your data. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for coming along. You can always ask for help through submitting a support ticket. So if you're in the Galaxy interface at the top, there's a button that says help, and then you can click support to send in a ticket or you can uh, directly email the help team. Uh, so next week, Tom Harrop will be joining us with top tips for making sure you're using the right tool for the job. So you've uploaded your data. How do you know which tool to use? Awesome. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and we will catch you next week.